Hey guys, Justin Bryant here from SelfMadeSuccess.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a Money Master of the Game book summary and some notes that I took. 12 lessons learned from reading the entire 600 page book that covers investing, retirement, making money, and all things related to that. Um, obviously, you can get it at Amazon and it's got great reviews four and a half stars out of about 2,500 or so and um, it's definitely well worth a read I did a previous video about this book that is a review of what subjects are covered in the different sections and the different chapters and whether or not this would be a good book for you to read depending on the type of person you are or what you what you're looking for so if you're trying to figure out whether you want to read it, you might check out that video. But if you want to read more about Tony Robbins, he has a Wikipedia page. He's the author of the book. He's written many books. And you can get this at Amazon. But the first lesson I learned, one of them, is that most asset managers can't beat the system, even if they say they can. So I'm talking about like mutual fund managers active brokers people like that that say oh we'll make you this much money and then of course they take a commission and all this stuff and usually they never beat the market if they do it's for maybe a year or two and then their luck starts to go south after that so nobody ever consistently beats the market unless you're just in the very top tier of hedge fund managers and people like that so 96% in fact of mutual funds don't beat the market for a consistent stretch so basically one of the big principles in this book is to avoid most mutual funds because for the most part you would have to just get super lucky to find one that could actually beat the market and many of the ones that actually do consistently beat the market are not actually taking new clients because they have very niche groups of investors that typically have a very high net worth so for the most part you just don't want to deal with mutual funds and you do not want to try to beat the market yourself either so you may not even want to try day trading or mutual funds at all um, you're better off just going with other options number two invest 10 to 15 percent of income each month no matter if the market is up or down so this is one of those things where you need to play the long-term game and there are going to be crashes in the market in fact there are tony robbins has actually said this on television as well but there are actually frequent miniature collapses in the market where you know people start to panic and the Dow Jones is going down or not whatever for a few months and then it picks back up of course there's the depression as well and the crash of 2008 those types of huge crashes that have you know effects for a few years happen maybe every few every 50 years every 30 years 40 years something like that every few decades maybe that'll happen but if you look at the long term of the stock market if you look over the last century it always keeps going back up and it keeps going to new highs so you need to just invest 10 to 15 percent if you can each month whether the market is up or down and when it's down you're going to get stocks a lot of times cheaper and what they'll be worth later on when the market picks back up after the collapse so a cool um, online tool that you can use on the New York Times website that Tony Robbins mentions in the book will show you 1% additional savings calculator it'll show you what your retirement what's your nest egg however you want to put it how much you can have in your investments if you just increase your savings by 1%. So let's say you 
start out at 10% and you uh, are thinking about whether you should do the next 11% and increase to that, but you're not really sure it would even pay off, this will tell you kind of whether or not it would be worth it and many times you end up making tens of thousands of dollars more just after 10 years of just increasing by 1% of savings and then it compounds because your dividends are reinvesting your interest is being reinvested until you actually need it so use this it's I'll have a link to this page for you it's the 1% more savings calculator and it'll show you kind of how far your savings will go but 10 to 15 percent per month no matter what is happening the top investors keep investing whether there's a crash or not number three automate investing or you probably won't do it so you need to set up a system where it automatically takes out a certain percentage or a certain set amount let's say five hundred dollars from your checking account or maybe it's 10% of your income that you deposited that month and put it automatically into investments so this way you don't have to think about it it's passive income it's it's going to put that money to work for you and it's going to multiply over time and it takes the headache of having to deal with it yourself each month out of it so a few places that offer this are TD Ameritrade. You can go to tdameritrade.com. Another one Tony Robbins mentions is Charles Schwab. You can go to charlesschwab.com and they allow for um, passive investing where it automatically takes out a set amount or a percentage. And that can really help you stick with investing and not have to worry about it all the time. It may seem like a lot of money to do, but what you're trying to do is multiply that money and it always ends up paying off and eventually it'll really help your retirement number four an index fund like a low-cost S&P 500 which is basically an accumulation of the top 500 companies on the market and that is something that is really hard to beat long term so most most of your mutual fund managers I mentioned 96% of them don't beat the market. When I talk about the market, one of the, one of the examples is an S&P 500 index. Or there's the Dow Jones index. And there's other indexes as well, but the S&P 500 is always one of the best ones. And it's always one that many top investors like Warren Buffett will mention for people who want to just invest for retirement and not uh, have to worry about learning every single trick there is to investing s and the s and p 500 has gotten like six percent on average for the last if you average the last say 80 years or so and if you read the book it will tell you more about different versions of this there's also the vanguard 500 the vanguard 500 is another great one um, I'll mention them later on, but um, it's very similar to the S&P 500. But index funds are a lot better because if one company goes down, you're part of an index, so it really doesn't affect you much, and it's always updating the top 500 companies. This way, you don't have to worry about you know, figuring out who you're invested in and changing your investments. It's just completely passive. You just put more money into it. You reinvest your interest into something like this and it just grows and grows and updates and grows so it's really hard to beat this long term and most of the book will tell you that the best thing you can do is to just use index funds like this and make sure they're low cost but you also don't have to pay a commission to your mutual fund managers if you use an index like this because nothing is being managed it's just kind of an account more than anything so the S&P 500 is definitely one you want to look at number five mutual funds cost you about 3.17 percent per year so that's 30 percent or so more expensive than other funds like an index fund for instance 
and they usually perform worse than an index fund. So one of the big parts of this book is to avoid mutual funds because there are so many fees and taxes. If it's actively managed the way it is, there's going to be more taxes. There's going to be commissions that have to go to your broker. Your broker is going to is going to try to sell you more stock all the time because they get money from that. And they're going to want to put your stock into funds that help them as well because they're going to have special interest in that because they get commissions from it from it but the thing is you want to avoid these really high fees and because they're 30 percent or more expensive than most funds and they actually perform worse you need to avoid them at all costs and this book explains to you how it works how the the funds themselves the companies that have these funds are the ones that make all the money and you do not make very much at all and most people don't take the time to read the fine print so that's why they still have these mutual funds so if you want to look at mutual funds and you want to figure out how much you're wasting on a mutual fund you can use the personalfund.com mutual fund cost calculator where you can type in the uh, ticker symbol of your mutual fund. You just need to go get that from, you know, whether it's with your employer or whether you have one set up for yourself or whatever. And then go, press go, and then it will tell you what kind of fees you're actually paying. This is a tool that Tony Robbins in the book actually endorses and it can really help you as far as figuring out how much you really are wasting with your mutual fund. Number six, you can't usually depend on a sum of cash for retirement. So a lot of people think that if they have a million in the bank that they can just live off that and just draw a little bit at a time. But because people are living longer and longer and you don't know where technology and things like that are going to be in about 10 years because technology is compounding in the growth of computers, artificial intelligence, and things like that, many people believe that we are going to be living much longer lifespans more and more a few decades into the future. So, you know, when 401ks, when a lot of these funds were created, the lifespan was only like 60 years. Social Security is another example. The lifespan was like 60 years when all that stuff was created. Now, people are living to be around 80, 85 years old on average in like the U.S. So, you can see the big difference in just about 50 years, 80 years, something like that in the lifespan potential of increased by 20 years. Now let's say with technology, we can increase that another 20 years. Let's say we live 100 years on average. A million dollars is not gonna help you too much if you retire at 65 or 70 and you live another 30 years. So you need to have investments because you can live off the interest from your investments. If, you're, if you have a million dollars in the bank it's not going to help you as much as a million dollars in investments that make you three three to four percent interest every year and then you can you know live off of some of that or let's say you have more than a million dollars obviously more would be better but um, you need to calculate how much you typically spend in a year and then multiply that by about 25 maybe 28 to be on the safe side is the fig those are the figures I've heard for figuring out how much you need in investments to live off your interest. So like I said, multiply your annual expenses for you and your family per year by 25 to 28, 28 being more on the safe side, 25 being more the minimum, and that's how much you need in investments to typically live off the interest. So that basically guarantees that you never run out of money and that you have a good retirement. Number seven, fund managers aren't your friends. So get a good fiduciary for expert advice instead. So 
the thing about fund managers is they are not going to have the most honest advice because they have skin in the game. They have commissions that they get. They have a company that they have to please or they lose their job. And so their job is to get you to sell more or to buy more, I mean, and not sell your stock so that they make more money. And a fiduciary, on the other hand, is one that gives you expert advice without having any uh, skin in the game as far as being affected by what investments you make. So they are not directly affected by whether you make um, certain investments or not. So that way they're not trying to sell you anything. They're just giving you advice on what's working. You know, these fiduciaries obviously are going to have a lot of their own portfolios and things like that, but they're not going to get commissions off of what you do. They do not have to get you to invest because they are not handling your actual investments in many cases. They're just advising you and giving you advice that can work for your specific situation without having to, uh, without you having to worry about how much they're making out of the deal. So the best advice, if you want advice, which is recommended in this book is to get a fiduciary instead of having a broker or a fund manager. Another thing, if at all possible, go for a Roth IRA or a 401k so that you don't pay more taxes in the future. A Roth IRA or 401k allows you to pay your taxes up front when you get it and then it can grow and be tax free throughout your future. So most of the time taxes are going to go up. Maybe they go down during uh, one presidency, but then they'll go up the next one. So the best bet that you can make is that taxes will go up in the future. It may not be um, a steady incline, but at some point it's going to be higher than it is right now. So you don't want to have to pay taxes in the future. You want to get the taxes out of the way now. That's the advantage of a Roth IRA or 401k as opposed to a traditional one. So you want to look at that for your retirement. Look at Roth IRAs, look at Roth 401ks, and figure out what would work best for you as far as just getting the taxes out of the way so that you can have a better future. Another thing, you don't want to lose money. And rule number two, repeat rule number one. This is one of the main things that Warren Buffett says. He's one of the people Tony Robbins actually interviewed in the book. And it talks about, um, you know, he has all these different investors. They give their advice. But the main thing is not to lose money, not to have a lot of high risk. And in some cases, even have asymmetrical risk and reward. So in other words, asymmetrical risk and reward is when it's kind of skewed in a way to where you have very little risk, but very high potential rewards. Like some investors won't even invest unless they have like a um, chance of quintupling their money instead of just, you know, having symmetrical risk and reward where you always have to risk more to make more. That's not the way to go. You want to minimize your risk as much as possible. The first thing you want to do is not lose money. Do not chase opportunities that could be high risk. That is one very consistent theme in the book. Number 10, your money goes much farther in some areas than others. And there are two websites that are recommended in the book for finding these places. Now, they could be different countries. If you live in the U.S., they might be different states. Um, for instance, you might not have a state income tax if you live in, say, Texas, if you live in Florida. And uh, Tony Robbins actually moved to Florida from California because of this, because of the really nice weather, the really nice areas in Florida, yet not having to pay as much just to live there like you do in California, which is very expensive. Um, you, you could even live in other countries like Costa Rica 
Panama, places like that where you can actually make your money go even farther. And um, another website for this is um, howmoneywalks.com. How Money Walks is kind of a little news site that talks about all kinds of ways that um, what states are doing and it talks about things like how to save money and live in different places and things like that. So those are two that Tony Robbins mentioned for you know the best places to retire. This page specifically will have all kinds of articles that talk about how to live on a small budget. Um, he referenced one where he was talking about how to live on $75 a day. Um, and if you're living on a social security budget, if you're retired, if you're not retired, if you're living with under $40,000, and just places like that so that will give you an idea of where you can make your money go farther if you're not sure how much money you're gonna make if you're not gonna have have huge growth you can simulate that growth by saving more living in other places number 11 diversify with low risk low cost assets so you want to use index funds you don't want to use mutual funds, but you don't want to put too much into one index fund. Even though an index fund like the S&P 500 is very good for diverse, diversifying across the top companies, they're still all stock. So in other words, you want to have different types of assets instead of just different companies of the same asset category. So. Instead of being all in stocks and just having diversified stocks, you want to have diversified stocks, you want to have diversified bonds, diversified um, commodities like gold, for instance. Uh, you might be diversified in real estate investment trusts or an REIT. So the book covers a lot of those different types of things, but you want to diversify in many different ways so you diversify the assets in a class and then you diversify your classes so that you never take a big hit no matter what the stock market does because nobody can really predict what the stock market will do number 12 Vanguard and TIAA-CREF are on a not-for-profit basis. So these are two of the best companies that you can invest with that are recommended constantly throughout the book by Tony Robbins, people that he interviews, etc. that um, make millions and millions if not billions of dollars. And the reason is because they are operating on a not-for-profit basis so Vanguard which is probably the favorite company mentioned in this book has all kinds of um, retirement accounts you can do they have automated investing you can go to their website this is what their website looks like and it will show you the um, all kinds of different things that they offer for investors whether you want to get a fiduciary advisor whether you want to um, do some automated investing whether you want to just about anything IRAs 401ks you know Vanguard is one of the best companies you can go with they also have the Vanguard 500 index if you want kind of a low-cost version of the S&P 500 to invest in it's a great index obviously mentioned a lot in the book and also TIA and they have all kinds of different offers for people who want to invest if you click on what we offer um, they have retirement planning they have advisors they have education if you want to learn more about things you have mutual funds annuities um, brokers fiduciaries insurance IRAs I mean you name it these two companies will have it but they are on a not per for profit basis so you can keep your costs down and get more from your returns so also I have 85 pages of notes from this book 
you've only learned a small fraction of its teachings. So I'm not going to cover every single thing I learned on my 85 pages of notes. You just got through a very small fraction. So I still recommend you buy the book at Amazon or wherever you want to buy it. They have it for Kindle, hardcover, paperback, audio, CD, and Audible versions of this book. So I recommend you get this book however you like to consume it and just go through the whole thing. At least do it once and take good notes. That's some of the things I learned that gives you a taste of what it really teaches and um, what strategies are taught. And also one more resource is um, the Economic Principles video done by Ray Dalio who is the founder of Bridgewater Associates, another great investing company. But this video here in about 30 minutes will teach you how the economic machine works. So if you're wondering how credit works, how interest rates work, how the stock market works, how the economy works. All of that stuff is explained in about 30 minutes by Ray Dalio, who is one of the people uh, interviewed in the Money Master the Game book. And he is one of the most credible people in the investment world. So if you want to know kind of how this all works, that's a great video as well. So if you got something from this video, if you feel like you learned a little bit about the book, maybe got a few strategies that might help you with your investing, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos like this for you. Also, if there are some other book recommendations you want to make that um, you think readers of this book would be interested in or you want to just let me know what you thought about the video, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. I'm always looking to improve these videos for you. And I will have all of the links that I mentioned, all of the notes and related content to this video in one place at selfmadesuccess.com. You can go there for that. Or you can just look in the video description and I'll have a link to that page for you. So other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.